Well, it's come to this. My least anticipated film of the summer. Okay, let's do this. Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Ben-Hur. So Ben-Hur is directed by Timur Big Mam Bitoff, Big Mam Bitoff, um, Big Mam Bitoff. You know, the same guy that directed Wanted and Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Both films that I actually do really enjoy. And the film has the talents of Jack Houston, Toby Kebble, Rodrigo Santoro, and Morgan Freeman. Those dreadlocks, though. Wow. So Ben-Hur tells the story of Judah Ben-Hur. This film is, by the way, based off of a novel. So this one follows more of the novel than the 1959 Ben-Hur did. And it tells the story of Ben-Hur who has a very strong brotherhood with his adopted brother, Masala, played by Toby Kebbell. But then, Masala, who is part of this Roman army, he accuses Judah Ben-Hur, falsely accuses him of treason. So because of that, it puts Judah Ben-Hur into the slave life. And after years of being a slave, Judah Ben-Hur goes out there to seek revenge and also hopefully redeem himself. If you guys have seen the top five least anticipated movies of summer 2016 that I did with WWE fan and Adam Haskell, I really was dreading this film to the high heaven. The trailer for this film was atrocious. Like, I seriously thought, this was gonna be an atrocity. That's how bad this film looked. The trailer just really pissed me off. And you know, I always try to go in the films with an open mind and I really tried my best with this one. But it was so tough for me to go into this one with an open mind because of just how bad that trailer was. The 1959 remake is a classic. I love that film. I can't say anything about the 1925 silent original film because I haven't seen that one, but the 1959 film, that was an epic film. That film was an achievement in cinema. It's an important film to hit cinema. And now that I've seen Ben-Hur 2016, it was bad. It was really, really bad. I'll say this to be perfectly fair. It wasn't atrocious. It wasn't as disastrous as I thought it was going to be. So I'll be fair in that sense. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but still doesn't excuse that Ben-Hur is still a bad movie. But to be fair, there are a few good things about this film. The performances from Jack Houston, Toby Kebbell, Nazanan Boniadi, the one that plays Esther, Rodrigo Santoro as Jesus, and Morgan Freeman. I thought they were all really good. They all gave genuinely good performances. That's where I have to give this film credit. Those actors I just finished mentioning, they did a really good job. I thought sometimes it had decent cinematography. I was able to see well enough of the film, the characters, the background. And I also do appreciate the message that this film has about forgiveness and redemption. Like it does have a good message behind it. And I appreciate this film for going for something like that. I always like it when a film has a message about forgiveness and you know, Ben Hurtel in 16 is no exception. It has a message that I thought was nice. I did believe in the brotherhood between Toby Kebbell and and Jack Houston as well. I actually did think they did a very good job at playing these brothers that do care for each other despite what they go through in this film. And the last thing I did like about this film is the interaction between Ben-Hur and Esther. Just like in the 1959 film where I felt that power between Judah Ben-Hur and Esther. That's the same thing here honestly. Although yes, not as strong as in the 1959 film, but I thought for the scenes when Ben-Hur and Esther were actually talking to each other, I actually found those to be quite interesting. And unfortunately, that's all the good things I could give this film. 
the problems I had with this film is that the filmmaking was really, really bad. And I actually couldn't believe it considering I actually thought movies like Wanted and Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter were well-made movies. I actually thought they were well-made movies and this film unfortunately really is not well made. The filmmaking is so bad and not to mention cheap. This is a pretty high budget movie and for it to look this cheap really is not good good and as were sometimes the cinematography did look decent sometimes as i said right now the movie is cheap and that same thing just goes to most of the cinematography most of the cinematography honestly did look bad it looked messy it looked unfocused and not to mention that the film would shake up and down so much that's what just made the filmmaking so irritating in Ben-Hur, was how it would just shake around too much. Even when the characters are talking for the most part, the camera would somehow just keep shaking up. Like, come on, have the camera stay still when the characters are talking. It's not that hard. Also, one of the things that made the 1959 film great to me was the whole Jesus Christ thing. You know, that left a huge impact. In this film, I respect what they tried to do with the Jesus Christ stuff, but the thing is that the Jesus Christ aspect in this film, while he does play a bigger role than he did in the 1959 film, I just felt like they were rushing it through, which is sad for me to say. Because, you know, Rodrigo Santoro, I thought he did a really good job playing Jesus Christ. And you could tell from the material he was given that he was trying to give it his all. In fact, most of these actors are trying to give it their all in this film. It's just that the material they're given is so crappy because the material is so rushed. It's poorly executed. Not to mention that this is a very poorly written movie. And most of the direction by Timur... Um, you know, his long last name. It's really bad. The visual effects, man, can they get so cringeworthy. There is this boat sequence, you know, where B Judah Ben-Hur is a slave and all that. That boat sequence, wow, that was horrible. My eyes were actually burning because of how horrible that boat sequence was. Even how it was acted in that scene, everything about that scene was so bad. And then the chariot race scene, which is one of the greatest scenes in cinema history when it comes to the 1959 film. Wow. Where they really missed the mark with the chariot race scene in this film is, like I've been saying, the filmmaking. Because when you look at the chariot race scene in the 1959 film, you know, it was wide shots. They didn't do all of these cuts. They really let you in the chariot race in the 1959 film because of the wide shots and how it was shot. It didn't have any shakiness. The camera was still. But in this film, it is shaky cam galore where you can't even see what's going on. And not to mention all these quick cuts. It's hard to get invested in scenes like that. Epic scenes like that when it just has poor editing and very crappy camera work to it. The film just could have improved. I feel like if this film actually improved with its camera work, maybe, just maybe, I could have seen this film being a little bit more tolerable. But it's hard to get invested in this world when the camera gets shaky. It just takes me out of that experience. And the whole revenge aspect, talk about really rushing that. And not to mention that it just felt way out of nowhere as well. Most of the acting in this film is either mediocre or just plain terrible. This film just feels so by the numbers. And it wouldn't be a problem if I actually liked this film, but the fact of the matter is, because I hated watching this film, that the by the number stuff is really, really bothersome. Whereas the 1959 film literally has epic storytelling this one just has piss poor storytelling and this film does not even earn the word epic. This is not an epic film. The 1959 film is. This just wasn't it. And man, the biggest problem that this film has going for it is the ending. And when this film was about to end, 
I was about to give it credit because it was following pretty much the same ending as the 1959 film. I was like, okay, even though I hated sitting through this film, I was, gonna, I was about to say, okay, good job for actually making the ending good. But then there is a little something that happens. Once that happens, it felt like an ending to a Hallmark original movie or a Disney Channel movie. So overall, you guys, I will say this, yes, Ben Hur 2016 wasn't as disastrous as I thought it was gonna be, but the fact of the matter is, this was still a disaster of a movie. I still hated watching this movie, and I just have to give Ben Hur one and a half out of four stars. It. <sighs> Oh man, so you guys in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Ben-Hur 2016. How do you like it compared to the 1925 silent film and a 1959 a remake? And also you guys, I did actually get to collab with Justin Watch's movies to review Ben-Hur 1959. I accidentally said Judah Ben-Hur's brother in that review. I know it's his friend. I meant to say friend. I just didn't recognize I said brother until once I sent that review to Justin. Just want to make it clear, I know it's his friend in the 1959 remake. I just said brother by accident, I think because of this film. But yes, you guys, if you want to check that out, I'm going to leave a link to the review in the description down below. And if you guys haven't checked out Justin's channel, I'm going to be leaving a link to his channel as well. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.